So they said, okay, we want you to do the mixed meal test one more time. And this time we want you to actually move around. We want you to actually like do some physical activity. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. Cause at this point I'm like, they keep telling me once we catch this, it's over. Once we catch this, we'll know what's going on. We can take that test result and we'll know how to treat you. thinking okay like this is we gotta make this happen I gotta go low like that's what I keep telling myself because this was happening multiple times during the day but for some reason my body sometimes is like no I'm fine that's not gonna do it so I go in to do this test and I'm like this is happening so I had just <laughs> finished being Elle Woods in a musical and uh, so what I did it was pretty great I ate my meal and then I danced in the lobby of this medical facility because I was like in the hallway. Cause I was like, I mean, I didn't want to bother anybody, but I had to make this happen. Like I had to, because if I didn't, then they still wouldn't know. So I'm sitting out there in the hall, like dancing, like I danced my butt off y'all. Like I danced it. So, <laughs> and I'm like, man, why isn't it dropping me? Why isn't it dropping me? And then it did my meter said I was like 54 so I'm like I went back there I'm like y'all gotta take this blood right now before I start going back up you gotta catch it so they did I didn't hear anything back about the tests like a couple weeks passed three weeks later and um I was still having the lows um and then I get a call and they're like are you okay and I'm like what do you mean like I'm just doing me like what do you mean am I okay and they're like your blood sugar in the lab was 46 and they're like are you okay like and I'm like this happens to me like a couple times a day like I don't know why no one took me seriously until that point that's the thing that kind of made me emotionally very upset because I was like how can I be telling you like I'm, I'm bringing it in my meter like how do I fake that like I've tested different meters they're similar like they're telling me I'm in the 40s and then you're telling me like your test though now you want to take me seriously and I I was I was very upset at that because you want to be taken seriously like this is your health you're not making this up so I go in there and um they made it sound like it was so dire like they 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 booked me like right away and they're like you need to come in like right away we need to see you like tomorrow and I get in there and then the doctor after all of these people were say, freaking out she's like well with your size and your height and your body weight a 46 is normal and I was just like what like I so it's normal for me to have blurring speech feeling like I'm gonna pass out shaky like I get I get bad symptoms with my hypoglycemia most of the time sometimes I don't catch it till I'm really low and my body has hypoglycemia unawareness now because of all the years of going low but at that time I was pretty sensitive and so I was like how is this normal like I just didn't get it so I she wanted to do some different things and um, it just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I need a second opinion because if you're telling me this is normal and you're just gonna send me away and be like, when you're 46, just deal with it, you're fine. It, my gut was just like, something is not right. This isn't, this isn't right. So um, I got a different doctor and this guy, I will say, did so much for me to try to figure this out and I'm so thankful for him. Uh, but it did get to the point where he couldn't figure it out either. So I go to this guy and I'm like, I need a second opinion. And this is my third endocrinologist now. So I've gone to one close by, one downtown. And then this one, it was also downtown. This was a different one. And so I asked him and I said, this endocrinologist told me that a 46 was normal. And he was like, what? 
Like, no, that is not normal. It's not. So it's, and he told me it's dangerous. So anything like in the sixties, you're like, Ooh, like let's watch it. Fifties, you need to be taking some action. And then forties, like you really need to be taking some action. Like that is like, you can, some people can go into a coma. I have never done that. Um, it's a whole other video. Cause the lowest I've been was actually 21. And I'm very, very thankful and very blessed to be alive today after being 21. I think after I had that moment, which was in between all of this happening and this whirlwind of not knowing what was going on, that's what was my wake up call. Because I thought, you know what? Like I was like looking around, like I am thankful to be alive. Like I am thankful I get to see the sky and I get to feel the breeze. Like some people don't come back from that. So I'm like, you know, like I actually do need to take this seriously and figure this out. So anyways, back to where I'm at, endocrinologist number three. We're gonna do some more tests. Those kind of came back normal. Uh, we did a different test. So he put me on some medication and it was a miracle at first. Like it was a miracle. I could eat pizza and my blood sugar was just 80. And I, and I felt so good. I can't even tell you. I, I was taking acarbose and it, it made me feel like I was normal again. And I, I loved that. I was so excited about that. And it worked for a couple months. I want to say three or four months. And then my body started getting used to it. And I started going low again, even though I was taking it. And I think what was the moment for me where we really decided, me and the doctor, that we needed to do something different was, um, it's actually at the place I am right now. I was at Starbucks <laughs> and I was in my car and I was feeling a little iffy that day. I checked my blood sugar. I was like 95 and I walked inside and I was 55. So my blood sugar, just from me walking, because I had done that after I ate, um, plummeted that quick and I was in there trying to keep it up trying to get it back up and I called and I said hey like this is my second or third low today something's not right I need more medicines or something so I go in and he's like okay I want you to try taking metformin that one gave me a lot of weird side effects I felt drunk I felt kind of weird and so I we stopped that <clears throat> and then he said you know what we really need to do a test um, right away we need to take you and hospitalize you for a couple days and see if your when your blood sugar drops if your insulin levels are too high because then I could have insulinoma which is where you have like a tumor in your pancreas that creates too much insulin so we're like yeah we want to rule that out because I don't want to have to deal with that and and in some ways this is sad to say I was really hoping it was that because in like 80% of people once they remove that you're good. It's like a cure. You're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And I, at this point I was like, I just want this to be over. <laughs> like, because I couldn't even walk like 20 feet without having issues. And all in this time, I, I was trying to get a Dexcom because I would be crashing so quickly that I couldn't catch it. And by the time I was catching it and feeling it, I was in the 40s or 50s and it was just so bad on my body. Sometimes I wouldn't have enough symptoms and I wouldn't know what was going on until it was like basically too late to have a bad low. So he said, you know what? Your insurance isn't covering it right now. So let's put you in the hospital and see if we can figure this out. So I go into the hospital and I'm there for, they wanted to do a 72 hour fast. It was terrible, <laughs> but I just kept telling myself, I got to get through it. You just got to get through it. And then on the other side, you're going to figure it out. So I tried to stay really strong and did that. But during, I think it was the 48 hour mark, my blood, my blood pressure dropped really bad. I think I was... I don't remember what the numbers were, but they weren't good. It was like 80 over 45 or something. And I, and I was, I had this like sweating. I thought I was going to like throw up or pass out or something. And my blood sugar still wasn't low enough for them to do the test. Cause it was only like 55 and they wanted it low fifties to take this sam sample. So they said, keep going. Let's see if we can get it to drop even more. 
But then they were like, well, if we can't get it in this amount of time, we're gonna have to transfer you to ICU because you're too high maintenance. Because <laughs> they're like, they had to come in and check my blood sugar every like so often and they, could, they didn't have enough people to keep doing that. So I'm like, great, come on body, it's now or never, you gotta get this, you gotta get low. Like, <laughs> so I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> And, uh, but there's not, it's out of your control. So you're like, I just gotta wait it out. So I go low and they catch it, thank God. And then he's like, okay, you can eat again. And it was low enough. And he said, it's abnormally low, but your insulin levels are also low. So they're like, we don't know now. We're, we've hit a roadblock where we really don't know. And so, coming out of the hospital, I was very anxious about keeping my blood sugar up because when I don't eat, I'm more sensitive to food. So usually I'm okay if, if I don't eat, I don't usually go low without eating, but once I do eat, it's like I'm doubly sensitive. So I was like super nervous. So he puts me on this like low dose steroid for just to see what happens, just to keep me elevated enough. So when I go home, I'm not like on the floor, like, you know, so I take that. He just had me on that. And then when I came back to do the next checkup, he's like, just stay on the steroid and add these other medications and let's just see. And I felt really sick. I did not feel good. Um, those medications made me feel really foggy. It got to the point where that steroid, I started getting a lot of floaters in my eyes. I started gaining weight. Um, the weight gain didn't happen until after I was off of the steroid for a little bit. Um, but that's something I'm struggling with now because I was on it for probably five months. Even though it was a low dose, like it's still in my body and with steroids, like they don't come out of your body. So I was very, not feeling good but and um but I will say the one thing that I did find through all of that with my third endocrinologist was I got a Dexcom and I want to do a separate video to devote it to that specifically because of how important I think Dexcoms are in blood sugar management and how much it has changed my life like literally I owe so much of how good I feel when I have a Dexcom to having a Dexcom. My insurance still wouldn't cover it, even though I'd been in the hospital for hypoglycemia, even though I was checking my blood sugar probably 10 times a day because I was having three or four lows a day. Because I was not diabetic, my insurance company would not pay for it. It's very expensive. Um, so it kind of brings me around to where I'm at now. I am on my fourth endocrinologist and this guy is more like hey let's try to go through diet and he actually says he has other people that have this and i never heard that <laughs> in all of these years i've never heard a doctor say hey i have other patients with this it's the first time i've ever heard that and for me that's like a good sign um i really hope that this will work he's he's wanting to do it more with diet and then maybe add medication if possible if like it's completely necessary but he did tell me that right now, we don't have the testing to figure out exactly what's causing it or exactly what's going on because it could be gut hormones, it could be different things that they can't really measure right now. And so he did tell me that the thing that I have to prepare myself for is that there is no cure, there is no one tried medication. It's very much experimentation at this point. And I, I wish I'd found him sooner because I feel like that's what I had to learn the hard way is that right now for reactive hypoglycemia, you will always have it is what he told me. I, I'm hoping with the ketogenic diet that maybe that will change. I'm hoping maybe that will like reverse it somehow. Like that's my prayer. But um, he did say that most of the people that he has do go on to develop diabetes so right now it's basically preventative to trying to not have that happen and I'm getting new entrance so I'm praying that they will cover Dexcom because that 
changed my life. That made it to where I was able to stop those bad lows, those 40s and 50s before they I ever got there. And I noticed a huge difference in the way I felt because I wasn't having those every day. Um, and it's, it's sad that when you have insurance and they won't cover it and you need something that badly that I couldn't even walk 20 feet without dropping like that. And if I'd had a Dexcom to tell me, hey, you're starting to go low, like just take it easy. I would know that, <laughs> you know? Subscribe if you want to hear more. And if you want to go on this journey and this crazy adventure called life with me, because trust me, it's been a little like, woo, right now. Like <laughs> it's been a roller coaster, ups, downs, everything in between. And I want to share that with you. I want to share that with you because I want to help you. And I want you to know that you're not alone going through this. So as I always say, I don't, I don't have that many videos yet. So anyways, have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you so much for spending time with me. It truly means so much. Your time is so valuable and I can't believe, I'm honored that you would spend it here with me today. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. Follow me here on YouTube, subscribe to my videos, turn on the little notification thing so you can jump on with me whenever we're going through an adventure. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.